All right, everyone, we have exciting botanical news, and it comes from my home state here in Vermont, up in Addison County, actually. I'm going to read a little bit of this verbatim, uh, actually, and then I'll, I'll weigh in, because I'm pretty sure I've seen this species myself, but I was not aware, because it's so small and innocuous, I wasn't aware that it was apparently not supposed to exist in Vermont anymore. Never in over a century has a botanist in Vermont seen a tiny floodplain herb until now. It's all thanks to the keen eyesight of the state's newest plant scientist, Grace Glynn, who had been on the hunt for false mermaid weed, or Florica um, proserpinosoides. I'm probably mispronouncing that one. Since starting her job about a year ago, the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department said, the last discovery was recorded in 1916. So this is a little plant. Link in the description archived, of course, you can see some pictures of it. And it's a really, really small uh, flowering plant, and it's a, an, an annual that lives in these flooding areas uh, wh where there's intermittent, basically, flooding, a floodplain plant. Um, I think that I've seen it before. In fact, it might literally be out back right now, and, and the Vermont uh, Fish and Wildlife Service probably should search around in the area, the swampy areas, um, off of you know the, the little tributary of the Otter Creek that runs up back here uh, beyond Sanborn and Chisana Drive because I think that you will find it. Um, I'm 99.9% .9 sure that I've seen this actual plant before. I don't know, I just love botany. Now this plant doesn't apparently have any culinary or medicinal uses, unfortunately, because anything like that is definitely more up my alley. So congratulations to Grace Glynn. That's pretty cool. And uh, I'm hoping, I'm thinking, I have to travel to Europe literally tomorrow. I might take a little bit of a mini hike up there because I think I might be able to document some of this. I'm pretty sure that I've seen it. Also, there's like a million Jack in the Pulpits up there. There's a whole patch of them. Uh, you wouldn't believe it, how the things change over time. When tourists come through Vermont and they see like the trees and the mountains and stuff, they think of it as very idyllic and it's like sort of non-changing. This is the case for most things. If you go to Woodstock, it pretty much looks like it did when I was a kid, other than the electronic parking meters and the fact that you have actual electronic systems in the stores. When I was a kid, a lot of them had the old manual cash registers from 100 years ago, actually. But if you actually go in the woods and you take a hike, and then you hike up there five years later, uh, things have changed uh, immensely, actually. Like, because of the work that they've done up out back, there's a huge patch of lupin plants, and uh, I, I would not, uh, I will not confirm or deny my activities with regards to the lupin population of the uh, little subalpine uh, hills out back. <laughs> I may or may not have been involved with that, or the stinging nettles that are around, which are very, very useful. You can turn them into nettle water, use it in your garden. I'm going to be doing that later today. It is spectacular for plants, by the way. Uh, this little species, though, it does look cute. Nice flowers. It's just that they're only like two millimeters across. So this is one of those little tiny innocuous plants that would be easier to miss. Uh, within botany, uh, you're more likely to find the endangered species or the species you thought wasn't in an area if it's large. So if it's a tree or a bush or a large shrub or something like that. If you have to get down on your hands and knees and you have to search through a floodplain to find it, you're less likely to find it, of course, because the human optical system uh, is not primed for little tiny things like that uh, so much. I love plants. I mean, I'm growing a hundred species right now. <laughs> it couldn't make me happier. I'm glad they rediscovered this. Again, it was the dawn of the 20th century, the last time this plant was found in Vermont. There's another endangered species, and I can't remember which one it was, that they found on a few uh, cliffs up in the Burlington region, well, outside in, in, in that county, and I can't remember the name of it, and they won't even tell people where it is because it's heavily endangered. This is not an endangered species. It's just that they didn't understand that it was still in the state of Vermont. It hadn't been seen in over a century. This happens all the time. The recently rediscovered population of false mermaid weed has been able to thrive in high-quality habitats on both private and protected land for 108 years. This shows that responsible landowners and conservation organizations can truly make a positive impact. Honestly, it's unlikely that the private landowners understood that the plant was even there. It's more like, uh, hey, uh, we didn't mow this area for a while. 
there's this plant we can't identify. But th that's the other thing. If you were to outsource botanical knowledge to the general population, I think that you'd find that a lot of supposedly endangered species aren't so endangered after all. Again, like Jack and the Pulpits are supposed, I think they're a protected species in this state. Uh, well, they're all over the place. They're everywhere. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've seen them, uh, they're on the rental property. They've been sporadically in the woodlot on this property, although I, I think they've gone by. There's an enormous patch of them, the largest that I've ever seen, you know, uh, you know got a stone's throw from here, basically. Happens all the time. You find ginseng, you find doll's eyes, you find all of these interesting species that most people, they don't even know exist. I would say that the habitat up out back, in the area that's both hilly and swampy, for both mycological species and botanical species, is one of the most rich locations that I've ever seen. I think it's because of the variability of the land and the soil. Uh, you've got hill, and you've got floodplain. You've got aquatic, subaquatic. You've got field. You have areas that are more hilly and rocky. You have areas that are more cleared. And so they all sort of mesh together. In a very, very small area, you have an enormous number of species. I don't know. This isn't hard-hitting political news, I know, but I get fascinated by it. I fucking love the woods. <laughs> There's literally nothing wrong with enjoying flowers fucking trilliums and everything else under the sun all over the place. Asters, marsh marigolds. Uh, I could talk for hours about this, but some of you might enjoy that. Some of you might enjoy it if I keep it a little bit shorter. Anyway, uh, this is uh, an important discovery, actually. Uh, this uh, species was not documented in the state for over a hundred years. Well, it's back. Uh, excellent. I hope that I can uh, find some at some point because I'm, again... 99% sure that I have seen this. Um, if it were edible, I'd be putting it on a salad right now. No offense. That's about all. Peace out.